Analyzing isn't hard. Wait, yes it is. It's harder than glass, but it's not hard to do. Start out with some sulfuric acid. Mix up 15 to 18% by weight. If you're measuring in American units, about a gallon of water is about eight and a half pounds. So a gallon of water plus enough sulfuric acid to make 10 pounds should do it. Always add acid. It's exothermic, so adding water to sulfuric acid can make it boil violently and shoot acid into your eyes. Probably not a good thing. Speaking of safety, gloves and goggles. The goggles do nothing. If you get dilute sulfuric acid on your hands, it may feel uncomfortable and dry your skin out something terrible. If you get in your eyes, you'll be in a world of pain and risk serious, maybe permanent damage. Cathode black goes on the aluminum sheet that isn't going to be anodized and the anode, red, goes on the thing that your parts will attach to. Hang the parts with either aluminum or titanium wire. Anything else will contaminate your anodizing bath. Titanium is nice because it's reusable. You have to math how much current you need for your parts. This is based on the surface area of the part, which you can conveniently get in Fusion 360, if you've modeled it, then use this handy calculator that we'll link in the description. Set your current limiting power supply to the values it tells you, and we're off. We're anodizing. We're anodizing. Set a timer. So what the heck does that mean, and why would you do it? Analyzing builds a thin layer of aluminum oxide on and into the surface of the metal. This layer has a few really helpful properties, like having pores that can absorb things, resist a lot of chemicals, make the surface of the metal non-conductive. Oh, and aluminum oxide is really freaking scratch resistant. Also, you can dye pretty colors if you'd like. Speaking of, before it's finished analyzing, mix up some dye. Get real anodizing dye. I know some people have gotten away with using clothing dye or something else, but I've never seen good, consistent results with that. We've linked to the Amazon page in the doobly for the dyes we're using. The ratios are different for each one, but it's some amount of dye powder and clean water. Start heating the dye to a temperature listed on the bottle. Don't listen to the cat. Is it done? Take it out. Dilute the acid that's left on it with some fresh water. Put in the blood, set a timer for 30 minutes, for our metric friends, that's about 0 0.099 souls. Remember that honeycomb surface that the anodizing made? You're filling it up with dye now. Time's not up yet, so give the cat some attention and get some water boiling. Take it out of the dye and put it in boiling water. 0.0249 souls. It's done, take it out. And you were so close, uh, but now you have to start all over. Anyway, thanks for watching. Wait, wait, wait. I know, right? I kept saying it, but we went and used tap water for the last thing. Clean water means deionized. Tap water can have a total dissolved solids of about 100 to 200 parts per million. That's way more than enough to make your parts splotchy and discolored. If you don't have a deionization filter, you can pick some up at your supermarket. So now that you've ruined it, mix up some sodium hydroxide and water to strip the anodization. How long is it supposed to go in there? Until eh, it's clean. Okay, let's start over. This time, if you feel like it, do the anodizing in a comically large beaker. I actually don't, because if this breaks, it would be a big, dangerous mess to clean up. Dye. Boil. You're making a substance on the surface of the aluminum oxide called bomite, or aluminum oxide hydroxide. This happens when the aluminum oxide is exposed to water at 93 to 100 degrees Celsius, or 660 to 700 Rankin if you're one of those pedantic Scottish superfans. The bolmite fills in the rest of the pores and seals the dye in place, and keeps other contaminants out. Now let's play. This is technically type 2 anodizing. Type 1 is very thin, and type 3 is known as hard anodizing, even though it's just thicker but not any harder. Type 1 uses different chemicals, and 3 needs an acid bath much colder and requires higher voltage. How thick is type 2? It depends on how long you let the juice run. We measured it and came up with 0 .00075 inches, Seven and a half tenths added to the part dimension after an hour and a half. Keep this in mind if you need really tight tolerances. Since the time anodizing changes the thickness, the depth of the little pores changes too. So we tried anodizing some parts for 30 minutes, one hour, and one and a half hours. And of course, ruined a perfectly good part that was meant to be two hours with bad water. Unicorn pink is also achievable. Okay, what else is important to know? Well, it's not very hard, but there are a lot of little things that can go wrong. Um, for one, the anodize isn't conductive, so kind of as it grows on the part, you can lose contact halfway through anodizing. I like to use titanium screws and stuff if I have a threaded hole, because the titanium doesn't lose conductivity as it sits in the bath. Makes sense. What else? 
make sure that you have the part incredibly clean first, like wipe it down with acetone or something. If you have any little fingerprints on it, that'll start to show through because it kind of masks off the area. Gotcha. The second thing is that if you're using a little bucket bath like this, you really can't do like part after part after part because the bucket will heat up as it goes and then the sulfuric acid will actually eat into the anodized as you do the process. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. Yeah. And I know this isn't normally my style, but how safe is this? Eh, you know, I mean, you're playing with sulfuric acid, so goggles and gloves, obviously. The goggles do nothing. Um, you know, dyes on your hands and stuff, too. Um, the bigger things are, this makes a lot of hydrogen gas, so don't do this in a basement or something. And sulfuric acid fumes aren't real fun to breathe, so be careful about that. That seems pretty obvious. Yeah. The other thing is that, um, you notice we never fill a bucket up over about halfway or so. And the reason for that is that every time you get a little bubble comes to the top and pops, it kind of sprays that sulfuric acid everywhere. Ooh, splash city. You got it. Gotcha. Oh, and of course, don't forget to use clean water.